What's up? Uh, welcome back to Coffee Doodles. Uh, I had taken a little break, but I'm back. We're still in quarantine. It's about the you know first ten days of April, but we're still doing it. So we're still making videos, and I still haven't had a haircut. So welcome to Coffee Doodles in quarantine. Got my coffee. Uh, I'm gonna be working over here. Uh, my Cintiq's over there and my uh, other workstations over there, which is where I do other drawings. But here I'm on this computer because I recently fixed it and I'm very proud of myself. Uh, who knew that when you go into quarantine, you actually become an IT genius, which I am. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna be working on my Intuos today, not the Cintiq. Um, Cause yeah, and I, I kind of want to probably talk about workspaces because I think that my studio is set up in a very interesting way so while I draw I'm gonna draw on Photoshop uh, while we draw I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of a dynamic workstation so roll credits all right we're back all right I'm gonna do a little uh, little painting I haven't painted in a while, so I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, my sweatshirt's different because I corrupted the video, and I'm re-recording it. So I'm gonna do a little style I haven't done in a while. I was gonna talk about workspaces. Um, so the way that I have my workspace set up, it is designed to be very dynamic. I find it important for uh, workspaces to be really dynamic so that they can be used in a multitude of different ways. Um, and what that means is I want to be able to, you know, ink ink in one spot and move around and scan it and then work in a different place um, to do digital stuff uh, and I've got I've actually got three separate workstations set up uh, in my studio uh, to accommodate different needs that I have so, um, the one directly behind me is my digital workstation, where I do a lot of my uh, my work. Um, the workstation that I'm working on right now is more of like intensive computing kind of stuff. Um, and then over there is my traditional workstation, um, which is meant for painting and inking and drawing it's where I do a lot of my other videos um, and it's uh, yeah and I like it like that because I don't want to just have one workstation for everything um, because then I feel limited so I like to have multiple multiple places where I can do different things I recently just fixed my computer um, so I can better take advantage of this space that we're in right now. And I feel more complete now that I've done that. And I can work in the manner that I most desire. Freely. It helps me to be the most creative I can. Instead of, you know, limiting myself 
to uh, one technique or process. I can move around my space and I can sort of change the way I'm working and do do things the way that I want to do things without having to worry about shaking up my space too much. It's already set up that way. So I challenge you to consider your space. Are you working in the most creative way you can? Or are you just you know, doing things because it feels like it's supposed to be that way? So look around you and be like, all right, what can I do to improve my workspace today? Is it an organizational thing? Is it a space issue? Do you have enough room to spread out? Expand and move. Is there like a, a creative block? Is there something in your space that's preventing you from uh, being as creative as you want to be? And make a change. You know? but man, I've always hated that poster. Get rid of that poster. I don't know what to do with all these books. You know? Put these books into a different room. And uh, try something new. It's essential, especially in this era of uh, working from home to uh, perfect your workspace as much as possible so you can get the most out of it. If your workspace is not working for you, it is working against you. You gotta, you gotta be aware of that. Get the most out of it. So with this drawing, I'm just sort of uh, playing with shapes and edges. It's really about edges in this. Soft edges, hard edges, and uh, the balance between the two. Um, I did a lot of this kind of thing in, in college, and I should do more of it. Um, it's always important to think about, like, what your technique is and what are some techniques you haven't done in a long time, um, and what techniques can you try to be more creative. Uh, like, what's something you haven't done in a while? Pull that out and try it again. And this is like the same concept of pushing and pulling. Uh, you're pushing the painting back. You're bringing it forward again. And repeating. Uh, with this kind of thing, it's always good to I always like to work from the highlight, you know. Um, 
So like you, when you push it back, you pick the brightest point and you work from there. Um, and you sort of uh, perfect the lighting based on that. Uh, and you work backwards. So from that brightest point, you go out to the uh, darker and softer points. And that just brings the brings it forward, I think. You know? So you pop the brightest point. Pop the brightest point. And then you just sort of work backwards from there. Uh, let's talk more about workspaces. Uh, when it comes to my workspace, uh, I, you know, I use <laughs> what was my sister's room uh, before she moved out of the house, uh, and I've got it set up so I've got a nice, beautiful lookout of the window and I think that having having that you know keeps me inspired something to look out onto having a beautiful workspace I think is also important uh, beautiful in the sense that it's a space that you can cherish and love you know And make it your own. And so when you do like this um, working from the highlight, you know, you can sample from the highlight or you can sample in the dark. So you're like, all right, uh, I need to bring in more highlights. So I'm going to sample that little point there or I need to push it back more. So I'm going to sample the darkest point. Uh, it gives you a sample point to experiment with. And you can sort of shape the light spaces nicely. Pushing and pulling and pushing so you get this nice workable form. Starting to starting to get a little bit of an air about it. You can start to feel the space. Uh, it's also good to have color up so that if you sample a point, you can fine tune it with the color. Right, so you sample that and you're like, well, that's a little too desaturated. Boom, pop in some more colors. So that's. There's that. I want that to be a little bit more red. So you make a mark. You sort of fine tune it in the color. And you start placing it. 
So, ooh, that shadow. That shadow right there could be a little bit more. Yeah. You sneak some greens in there. Sample it. Fine tune it. Keep going. Keep it. Keep it heavy. You know, heavy marks. Keep it loose until the colors start to make more sense. And like this kind of thing with like the ear, you know? As the ear goes backwards, there'd be a stronger light hitting closer to the head. So, letting it fade out. And go backwards. Did it freeze? Oh my gosh. Wow. Well. Alright guys, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Uh, if you like what you saw, throw a comment, do a like, give it a share, uh, subscribe, smash that like button. <laughs> um, I'm going to put some Patreon information in the uh, description of this video. If you guys have been liking these, please consider uh, becoming a subscriber, a Patreon patron. And uh, stay tuned, i got more content coming. Took a little break, but I'm back. Um, maybe next time I'll have a haircut, probably not. We'll probably still be in quarantine, so uh, thank you so much guys. Have a wonderful day. Take it easy.